frightful But the fire is so delightful And since we've no place to go Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow Yippee Kai morning, Yippee Kai afternoon, Yippee Kai evening, whatever kind of Yippee Kai A day you've tuned in on, we thank you here on behalf of the Back Cave and Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas special, holiday special, Bond special, uh, what are the Jewish people? Hanukkah special, Ramadan, Ramadan, Kaboom, Comic Con, <laughs> Supernova, whatever, whatever it is that you, Festivus, Flash Mobs, yeah, Festivus, Festivus. Whatever it is that you want to celebrate, well, on those as well. I'm your host, Red Thunder, Adam Gerard, and joining me this week in a very special Christmas 2015 special are the Honey Vegetarian Neil. Hello. The Dad Night Brayton Ahern. G'day, Yippie Guy A. And returning, the President, Adriana Orr. I'm really hot right now. Oh, it's like 42 degrees. I think it's about 50 in here. 24 according to the uh, the incorrect air conditioning gauge. So, and how are we all on this lovely Christmas morn? Hot. Oh. Yeah, not too bad. Week of, week of up and ups and downs and swings and roundabouts and six of this and half a dozen of the other. But, yeah, I'm vertical. Good day. Fair enough. And, Brayden, how are things over there in Moe? Oh, you yeah, know, Christmas time working in retail, had a clunge of a week once again. Ah, well, it is the season to be jolly. It is. It is apparently and not. And be a wanker, I think. Yeah. Well, what about you, Chris? How's your week been? Uh, same old. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Wow, well, you're all you're all excited, people. Oh. Uh, so, I guess let, let's inform the viewers of what we're doing here. Let's make it a little bit special here from the Bat Cave uh, this Christmas. We've decided to slightly go outside the realm of normal superheroes into what I like to deem the everyday man superhero and uh, we picked two Christmas movies and I think in order to tell us about these we need to throw it over to our social media ambassador because one of them gets a lot of attention on social media this time of year and I'd like to get his thoughts on what he thinks of the attention this particular Christmas movie gets. This uh, particular Christmas movie the attention it gets is the argument of whether or not it is in fact, a Christmas movie or not. It's a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas movie. Absolutely a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas. Uh, like like the meme going around is uh, there's two types of people. One who think that Die, Hard, Die Hard's a uh, Christmas movie and those who are wrong. Yeah, that would be correct, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the one that doesn't get as much attention, though, I think, uh, undeservedly, is Leaf Weapon, also a Christmas movie. In yeah. fact, mm-hmm. uses Christmas better, I, I might add. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. But I think uh, I think Lethal Weapon will lead into an argument later on. But first things first, let's kick it off with the first movie we're going to look at, and let's talk Die Hard. A New York cop, John McLean, has come to see his wife. Instead, he's going to have to save her. Sit down. Within this skyscraper high above the city, Twelve terrorists have declared war. They're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. They have already killed one hostage. Yippee ki But you just destroyed a building. He is alone, he is tired, and he hasn't seen deadly squat from anybody down here. He's an easy guy to like. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. And a hard man to kill. Bruce Willis, Die Hard. Got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. Who knew? Alright, so as we just saw, that, that's that's what Die Hard is about. Bloke in a building. Just trying to get it on with his, with his estranged wife. Yeah. And shit starts happening, he's all like, man... I gotta do savings, I guess. <laughs> from the from the Germans. From uh, are from they the Germans? German and, and a couple of Swiss. I, I know there's a couple of Americans in there. Yeah, it's kind of an international conglomerate, but uh, Hans Gruber is German. Yeah. So yeah, I I didn't pick that up until they said that he was German. I'm like, oh yeah, there's the accent. Yeah. It's because Alan... Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. <laughs> is, a very, uh, is a very good 
a very good actor in the, the subtleties in him. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure one of like maybe like eight people in the world that only like Benedict Cumberbatch can impersonate. Alan Rickman's near Alan Rickman. Yeah, that sounded like Mr. Bean whenever Oops. you try. No, only you sound like Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> try to do it. Alan Rickman. <laughs> That would be a terrifying concept to have uh, Rowan Atkinson play Hans Gruber. As Mr. That's Bean? Sca- as Mr. Bean. That scares the shit out of me. I don't stop kind of cowboy. <laughs> On a beach. Making <laughs> 20%. I had to put up for like days with Red Thunder coming in and being like, does this sound like Alan Rickman? I'm like, no. Alan Rickman. <laughs> Are you some kind of American cowboy? <laughs> but yeah, Alan Rickman is the impossible to impersonate. I'm Alan Rickman. You're actually starting to sound like Ian McKellen with some sort of palsy. Like, it's Ian McKellen trying to say Alan Rickman. I'm Alan Rickman. He did have a pretty epic beard though. Ben the Probies. Alan Rickman's beard. I have a better beard than Proby. Alan Rickman's yes. first movie. Is it? Let that sink into your fucking head. It's his first movie. Is it really? Yes. Oh, wow. shit. It's his first movie, right. and he's so green that they had to actually um, cut away every time he shoots a gun because he flinches. Because he's not used to shooting guns, but it's his first movie. No shit. Oh, yeah, TV series, mini TV. Yeah, it's his first movie. What was his second one? Oh, f- <laughs> Hold on. I believe it was something <laughs> Harry <Potter>. essentially British. <laughs> it was basically Harry Potter from there. Uh, the January Man, yeah, and then uh, he was in. Obviously, he played the best ever sheriff of uh, Rottingham in uh, Prince of Thieves. That came later. But God, he's, he's good. I love Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman <laughs> get out of my forest. <laughs> I'm Alan Rickman. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's when they kill him with palsy. <laughs> when was Die Hard made? Like, 1987. It was released. I think it was filmed in eighty. Uh, it was filmed in. Yeah. And Alan Rickman's only been acting for that long. He's been an act. He was a stage actor for yeah, a very long time. Yeah, like he had theater man, for like 15, 20 years stage career before he became an actor. Yeah. Wow. A yeah. film actor. Yeah. Oh. Before he got on the scenery and ate everything at night. <laughs> I'm Alan Rickman. <laughs> Feel my beard. Anyway. Was that his beard? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. He oh, rocked that thing for like a solid ten years. He, he shaved around the time of Dogma was the first time I ever saw him clean shaven. Yeah. Wow. Dogma freaks me out. Uh, and no, lo- and yeah, that love actually he shaved mm-hmm. and was like, whoa, he's a different looking dude. Yep. And yep. ever since then he's just been like, I'm fine being clean shaven, Rickman. <laughs> anyway, Brayden, <laughs> tell us what's it like watching Die Hard in mode. It's good. I enjoyed it. Very good. Look, this movie is uh, a classic. Um, those who rag on it are fuckheads. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this, yeah, this is a big sort of part of my childhood growing up. Um, watching watching this movie over and over and over again. I loved it. I love every aspect of it. I love uh, John McClane as a character. I love his uh, dialogue talk to himself all the bloody time. It's great. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. The relationship between him and the the black cop, I forgot his name. Ow, ow. Heaps of, I, did, I, I love pretty much all of the characters, really. Um, I love the Argon. Argon's fantastic, Argon. even though you start in little parts. Uh, mm-hmm. Limo driver Argon. No, Argon, uh, damn it, it's Argyle. Argyle. Like the sweater. Argyle. Yeah, Argyle. Yeah, he's not going to say Argon. No, it's no, not Argon. Argon. It's not <laughs> Egon, that was from Ghostbusters. Devereaux White, Argon. good old Devereaux White. I think it's his only movie, yeah. actually. Yeah. Hmm, check that. This is the the thing that amazes me about this movie is it's like three or four different movies all in one. Mm-hmm. And like just when you think you're like, oh yeah, watch an action film, it'll shift the tone, and you're like, oh no, maybe it's a bit comical, and then suddenly there's like a dramatic scene, you're like, what am I watching? And then it becomes a heist movie halfway yeah. through, and you're like, what the fuck is happening in this movie? Oh god, it's Christmas time. I love the Everything's escalation happening. of the cops. That is the one of the funniest parts <laughs> of the film is Al turns up and then the captain, like the deputy mm-hmm. captain turns up, whatever mm-hmm. he is, and then the fucking FBI turn up. There was a minute where I thought one of the FBI or the SWAT guys was Richard Pryor. 
Because literally, you know how they're running up the embankment, that dude, there's a little bit of comedy. Oh, yeah, it's called the Rose. Yeah, I'm like, is that Richard Pryor? Oh, he's fucking swat. <laughs> Where he's like, ow. <laughs> yeah, because the Mo was like this fat, thick thing. I'm like, is that? No, no it wasn't. Sure. It looked a lot like Rich Pryor because it, it would have been hilarious if it was because you would have heard motherfucker a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it would have been like, ah, oh, motherfucking Rose. Motherfucking Rose, but. Oh, God. Uh, I did notice that um, a lot of the, the bandit, like the, not the bandit, the SWAT guys are clearly not SWAT guys because they've got like the fatter mullets that we'll talk about later on. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of hair in this film, fuck me, the hair in the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> What, what? Yeah, Alan like, Rickman and Bruce Willis are the only two respectable looking <laughs> motherfuckers in this movie. Al's good. Bonnie Boy Taylor, what is that hair? And then <laughs> Coke Sniffer, what is Coke Sniffer? Oh, Coke like? Sniffer, friggin' uh, Harry Ellis? Ellis, that was... Was that him, Ellis? Ellis's hair would be a big combo. Would be. Be oh, more God. of a fucking 80s stockbroker. Well, shit a brick. He was in one of my favourite movies, Batman Mask, Mask of the Phantasm. Were they, like, the blondes? Like, were they brothers? Like the Bron brothers. Because they, they had, like, really, like, pedo hair. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, one had long hair, one had the short hair. Yeah, Carl had it was long just hair. all, like, slick to their face almost, but it was dry and story. It was and then you had one of the guys who had, like, that Justin Timberlake two-minute noodles thing going on. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Then you had, uh, you had a guy who looked suspiciously, like, buffer Huey Lewis man <laughs> in the front counter. Every time I saw him, I'm just like, man, this guy, I'm sitting him get up and be like, come and talk to him. Where are we going with this town? I can help you out. My wife had like, I don't know, some sort of fluffy poodle. Oh, oh that God. was, yeah, that was... She was just that was bad, bad. The, uh, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up, uh, th this movie is a special, uh, a special place in my heart. I actually remember the first time I watched it was with my brother. My brother sat me down, I think it was around Christmas time, when I was maybe eight or some shit, was like, we're going to watch Die Hard, come on. Because my brother was just like, fuck it. You know? <laughs> and we sat down, we watched Die Hard, and uh, his favourite scene, and he still, he would, he rewound it like three times to watch it, is where this one on VHS, as I go, oh. talks about this car. It's yeah. got all the shit, VHS, CB, yeah. yep. it's got like a TV this big, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a bit where uh, one of the where, where the FBI get ready to storm the building and yeah. all the henchmen are like piling into different areas to get yeah. ready and the Asian guy goes to the candy bar <laughs> the and starts bar. like eating candy. It's my brother's favourite moment is when he's like standing with a cup. Just iron off the candy. <laughs> oh god, how long? He's in, I, I, he got really badly typecast through the 80s. Every Asian thug. <laughs> I just went through his filmography. Asian thug. Oh, uncredited. We'll have more to say about it later. Yeah, I, he gets I, a name, though. I, I know he does. I noticed three similarities between the two movies. I'm looking forward to I noticed two. Look forward to hearing the third. I noticed two. Because I think we're on the same page with the two, but there is a third. Um, but yeah, uh, back to Dial. <laughs> I don't... I don't really understand... I mean, I know, John McTiernan makes weird films that have a lot of comedy that should yeah. work out by memory. He made uh, Under Siege. Yes. He made, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. God, why am I drawing a blank? Alright, so, oh, Predator. Eagle, I know he did, tra Predator, that was it. Last Action Hero. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to think of. <laughs> yeah. Last Action Hero, which is also <laughs> like, is this comedy? Is that this breaks forth action? Wall. Yeah, comedy, it's got a bit of drama in it. It's like, yeah. th there's very, very good moments where you, and I think it's just meant to be that John McClane is a New York smart ass. Mm. Because like the bit where he sends his, uh, who's, which, what's uh, I think that's Carl's brother? Fr uh, I think it's fr uh, Fritz, I think. I think, I believe not, I think it's down Fritz. The With the elevator, home, 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 machine gun. Love yeah. it. Yeah. I love that sort of shit. Um, and like where uh, Carl's trying to cut through all the like <laughs> phone wires, the <laughs> yeah. guy and like, Fritz is like, no, it's David! <laughs> Just little moments like that. Um, or naming two I love, I love the way Alec Rickman reads that message written on the jumper and he's, he's like, now I have a machine gun. No, I have a machine gun. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> what? Ho, Could you ho, ho. ho. Oh, no. Could you just stop? No, I have a Rickman. This is what I had to deal with. You guys can deal with it now. See, um, I like the little things like the two FBI agents, Johnson, uh, Johnson and Johnson. Johnson their yeah, but the but the oh, no. Big Johnson and Little Johnson. Who died? Just a. Something fell. Something fell. Yeah, they credited as Little Johnson and Big Johnson. I. Uh, <laughs> the dude that plays Special Agent Johnson, White Special Agent Johnson. Big Johnson, yeah. 
is legitimately, I know he's the bad guy from the mark, but legitimately, has that dude ever not played a fucking dipshit? Like, he's the most punchable motherfucker. <laughs> you look at him and like, I want to punch you. Yeah. Pock mark. Fuck. <laughs> punch, I, I think, I do, like, I thought about it. Initially, I was like, oh, he must have really bad acne as a kid, but then I realised, no, people have been punching in him in the face. Yep. For so many years, he's got such a punchable face. That's all the fucking scar tissue. Yeah, absolutely. Like I hated him. Show, I hated him in Showgirls. So, it's just one of those things. Some people just end up with those roles, like the Asian dude. Yeah, Gary or, Busey. Or even Gary like yeah, to the brain. The man. guy in Gotham who plays the mayor. He always seems to play like. Oh, Richard Kind. He always seems to play mayors or politicians. He's dopey as well. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's just a couple of roles again. Back to Die Hard. <laughs> Trying to keep us on track. I, I like the fact this film also is very practical. Like, there's a mm. lot of explosions and shit, but it's explosions. They're not C- CGI They're action. Yeah. It's, it's reality based. Yeah. And I like the fact, like, even when he's crawling through the ducks, he kind of does a little loop mm-hmm. accidentally. And, mm. like, because first of all, it's whether he sees that nudie chick mm-hmm. and kind of make, makes a double glass and ends up back. And he's like, ah, Lee's. <laughs> and I like that because it, it shows that, mm. you know, it's a yeah. cramped, confined environment. Yeah. I really he, like he's that. He's aware of his surroundings. Yeah, he's starting to learn it. He's self aware, so like most good cops would be. Yeah. That moment of shooting out the glass to make the claim run across the glass is that some of the most fucked up. This movie has some seriously pretty hardcore killings in it. Well, yeah, even oh, like yeah, all, it's all, the, all the guns and the shooting and the explosions, they all had a purpose and they yeah. all kind of um, yeah. built suspense and tension. So it's like other movie. movies where it's just like <laughs> explosions because it's because an action movie. Because you can. Because yeah. it's in our budget. Yeah. 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 It's a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, yeah he, he probably takes out a bad guy as it's like, oh, is he going to live through this? Like, obviously he's going to live through it, but it's yeah. you know, mm-hmm. intense and well, even, fun. Even like I mean, I know we've all we've all seen the movie before, so we have, and we know that there are like eighteen parts, so we, we know that he survives <laughs> the first one. But even that part where he's on the the walk in the and he's like, "Listen, tell her, I never said I was sorry. Tell her I'm sorry." Yeah, like that's still very believable every time. Mm-hmm. And even though I know he's going to survive, Bruce mm-hmm. Willis really does play the I'm, I'm going to die. Yeah, the, yeah, he's absolutely he's he's very good at playing the the hero that is willing to sacrifice himself for. The, the greater good sort of thing. It's, so he's, yeah. he's believable it's as an every man movie, ultimately. Yeah. Like, I, I feel this movie, you, you could almost transplant anybody into that role in theory. I mean, Bruce Willis is the best. Yeah. So you can put anybody in there and you feel like you, the same shit would happen because it's just yeah, regular it's, dude. It's, it's tangible. Yeah, like, he's like they start him off dressed in a, in a um, flannel shirt. Yeah. Like, like America, that's the most ultimate every man you can get. Then he has a bit of fucking wife beater. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> I said I want to see Dean Ambrose in that role. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah, we just because he's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. um, Johnny is uh, crazy, but you know he's still we'll with get it. Get into more into no, more yeah. later, but the WWE equivalent was uh, Dean Ambrose and Booker T. <laughs> 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 I just want to see Dean Ambrose in an action movie because I did one. He did twelve, a twelve rounds movie. Yeah, he did one of the twelve rounds. But he probably you probably want to see him in a good action. Yeah, well, tell me, I want to see him in like. Yeah, I want to see a Bruce Ambrose Willis quality things. one. <laughs> what, what, what Bruce, Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis Bruce Bruce like we talking Die Hard one or Die Hard five? Because I didn't hate to Die Hard. Die Hard is not okay. Or Die Live Free and Die Hard. Once again, I didn't hate that either. It's 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 probably the worst out of the five, but no, the second. Second one, with nude karate villains. In comparison to other the like action movies gone. without yeah. Bruce Willis, is it still bad or is it like still good? But oh, bad good. for the. Oh, it's di- it's, that's it's what I mean. It's Bruce, Bruce Willis is like the ultimate action man. He yeah. picks the right movies to be in. I think. Oh yeah. Oh no. Mm. Oh, that's a and, tough and one. As like the everyday man. Of mm. course, you got people mm. like Arnie or whatever. Oh, like, no, if you were to cast no, an everyday still, dude in things, I would actually yeah. agree with you. Bruce Willis uh, is a good choice. I still, Bruce Willis is a good choice. I still think if you're talking about the 80s, Mel Gibson has the better legacy of the everyman hero oh. from the 80s. Mel Gibson was the Mad Max. I'd say I'd say man. Mel Gibson plays yeah. a good, broken everyman, everyday man. Yeah. Like, his characters are far more broken than John McClane. But John McClane is a, hey, I'm yeah, just yeah, having trouble with the wife. I'm here yeah. to see if I can reconnect. I um, guess, yeah. I guess. Yeah, okay. Whereas it's Mel Gibson's, like, we'll get him later, is... He's haunted, okay. Okay, yeah. I can see that. But I still think, ultimately, when, okay, you, look okay. at, when you look at the, the list of films that we, they did in the 80s... Oh, yeah. Mel's 
Mel's action list is a lot more packed than oh yeah than Bruce. Yeah, Bruce was. But I would say now the ultimate everyman hero would be you, Jack. Even though he mm-hmm. really does one role. Yeah, but so does Bruce Willis. That's true. Yeah, that's fair. Hugh Jackman does do range outside of his action roles. That's it's true. just his action roles are always yeah. the every the cold calculating every man ass kicking Wolverine style. Yeah. 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 Which John McClane basically is. Yeah, if you were to re- if you would remake Die Hard today you would cast Hugh Jackman. Oh yeah, absolutely without a doubt. Without a doubt. Anyway. So Ultimately, this film is about good triumphing over evil and the stupidity of uh, law enforcement. Um, More specifically, LA law enforcement. The one thing I don't understand, though, about the whole film is the black hacker guy. I don't get how, like, everybody else fits how you might gravitate into this group except for this one you guy. Didn't buy Theo? Literally, how is he not that. I have favorite. seen villains like that in every other movie, and I've read about them in real life. That guy is clipped within two minutes because he won't shut the fuck up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, what is his? I don't think I. He. I agree. He's, he's one of those characters that he was. I don't think he had a lot of screen time. Um, but it was just one of those nonchalant. Hey, where need another dude? He really he didn't do. need to be in. This. But let's like. Why? He's so fucking... Of all the villains, he's so weak, Argyle punches him out. I like the fact, though, all three of them, Argyle, John McClane, and Al, all get to take somebody down in, like, an epic, like, yeah. <laughs> every time, you're like, fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, every time Al blows fucking uh, Carl away at the end, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> you get back on the beat, Al. <laughs> Off that desk, son. You're not too old to this sh- shit. <laughs> Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Exactly. exactly. I know there was exactly. a point where it was like it was getting all like action packed and whatever. It was like it was go time, and they like turned on their computers or their TV screens, so and yeah. it like took a while for them to actually like warm up. <laughs> on. I like the fact that touch screen is very obviously not a touch screen, but a computer program that like yeah is timed out for him to touch certain places. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just uh, in comparison to today, where it's all just oh. high tech and stuff, but so back in the day, that would have been like. Oh, that's top of the up. line. The computer computer that comes out of the fucking desk is what I was amazed by. I was like, yeah. what? And yeah, I'm, same here. I'm like, well, then again, it's a Japanese company. You'd think that. That is true. My ultimate, like, one of my, as I was watching these two movies, my ultimate cinematic nightmare with them to be rebooting these movies. Oh, I don't think they will. I. It, it would be like, I, I could just that. imagine, you know, Ez, Ezra Miller Le- casters. Lethal Weapon I could see. <laughs> I can yeah. see, but uh, but as I said, it would end up being Jared Leto was. Like, it would be um, no. It would be <laughs> Murtar's son is now yeah. the older Murtar. Yeah, yeah. And Riggs's kid will now be the the young, yeah, the loose the, cannon yeah. sort of thing. Because yeah. Riggs would probably be dead, I would think. Surely it would have to be. But anyway, ultimately we'll get to Leaf Weapon in a minute. Um, Hans Gruber. Doesn't give a fuck in this movie. Like, yeah. not a single. He's just literally like, Will you tell me? I'm out of drink, but will you tell me what you need to do? And then, like, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, Okay, bang. I trust you, you because have, I'm out of drink, man. <laughs> you have to count at three. And on three, he pulls the trigger. He's, he's a very good villain. He's probably top five. I, uh, I love the fact that the first time we meet Ellis, he's doing a line of coke, and the last thing he does is get given coke. Like yep. A can of coke. Yep. <laughs> I really thought that I like that symbolism I was like that's very clever that's very clever I actually never thought of that until then no I mean Hans Gruber is probably the best villain in general because he's just cold he's, he is he's very he's cold. cold and he even switches it up when John McClane pop, uh, springs him on the rooftop he yeah. pretty much has to be a hostage so well actually that scene is Sweet. completely improvised it wasn't in the script they uh, uh initially they were looking for a way to actually have it so the hero and the villain would meet because in the script they mm. don't actually cross ever cross part like oh, it's wow. only a vital walkie talkie and that sort of shit mm. um and so they they came out that scene when alan rickman was cast because he can do a perfect american accent as yeah. we saw and so the whole scene is improvised between the two of them not knowing what the other one is going to say. No shit. They just had to sort of say. Yeah, they, just got, they got to the point of I'm going to like the, the whole. But basically, McTeen and worked out the whole the plot points of like mm. yada yada. Mm-hmm. You hand him the gun. Eventually, mm-hmm. goes pull the trigger. Yeah. No bullets. Yeah. All right. So that, that's that. That was just all the plot points they were given. Yeah. Um, and a true bit of funny story. 
that was Alan Rickman's first day of shooting. Yeah. Was doing that that scene, so it's the first time those two had ever met each uh, other. And Alan Rickman blew his knee out on the first take because the butt has to jump across something. Oh, God. Landed, blew his knee out, so he's doing an entire scene standing on one leg with a knee brace holding his other knee in place. Fucking <laughs> hell. Which is why he's sitted, sitting through a lot of the rest of the film. Bloody hell. See, so, like, stuff like that adds to how good this movie is, how fantastic Christmas movie is. It's, very, it's a very clever film. Like, even, like, he's, he's, a, he's a cold piece of shit, but he's not completely heartless, like when, um, when body bad haircut what's uh Gennaro yeah Holly Holly when Holly haircut Holly. comes in Holly. and is, <laughs> and is <laughs> like uh okay oh, pregnant woman I want to lie in a back office he's like no but I will bring I will, I will bring I will the will sofa brought up to you <laughs> I'm Alan Rick but not Ian McKellen so yeah it's a, it's I think this is a good film oh, I think this is a good film um we, we'd yeah. be remiss if we didn't mention uh there's a lot of scumbaggery in this film but somehow the biggest scumbag of them all returns from the Ghostbusters universe <laughs> to be a reporter in this one. That oh. guy is a piece of shit. Yeah. Interviewing yeah. the fucking kid. Yep. Yep. He is like, yeah, because he gets into the house by threatening the maid with calling INS. Yeah, that? he threatens to have her deported. Fucking, yeah, Richard And then Thornburg. says this is the last chance that the, the kids are going to have to talk to their parents. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What a piece of shit. Richard Thornburg, scumbag. What do you now. think of, uh, what do you think of Die Hard over there, Press? Watching it, I don't think I have actually seen it before, so that's... What did you think of it then? I liked it. I thought it was really good. I missed the start of it, but that's okay. Not a lot of... What happens at the start is that he's on a plane. It starts off with him on a plane with a guy being like, don't like to travel, but he's like... What, what? Make fists with your toes. And he's like, what? And he's like, the secret of surviving air travel is when you get where you go and take your shoes off, walk around the car and make fists with your toes. That's why McLean's bit. Okay. That's all you miss at the beginning, and then him arriving in LA and being like freaked out and a fish out of water because LA is so fucking weird. Mm. And you can smoke in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, the first thing he does when he gets off the plane is like, <laughs> I'm uh, John McLean. You can carry it. So, yeah, alright. Let's, let's, uh, what do you, I, exactly, what are your favourite scenes in the film? Before we, before we get into awards, what are your favourite scenes? Shit. Would have to be the vent scene. Uh, where, um, he's got the, no, it's, it's just that little inner monologue where he's walking, he's basically crawling through, it's just that inner little, the monologue that he's going, yeah, come out the coast, have <laughs> yeah. a few laughs, and the lighter, and yeah, no, the tense. Uh, where I think it's Carl that's shooting up the vents as well. That sort of that yeah, follows on pressing. The yeah, I like. I remember watching it for the first time. My uh, my my uh, stomach was in my throat at that point in time because I thought, well, maybe he doesn't make it for the first time seeing it. But yeah, that's yeah. it. I do I do love that. Like uh, when they pull up at Nakatomi Towers, these are my two favorite ones. When they pull up at Nakatomi Towers in Argo, I was like. So as to play, and you meet the wife, have a merry Christmas, go home, everything's cool, and a movie like he's basically yeah. like a movie or something yeah. like that. And yeah. McLean's like, yeah, that's the plan. And I love the fact that literally, like, if this movie goes according to the plan, it's literally like he walks in, it's like, hi, hi, hi let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. I just love the idea of that. I also, I, my favourite moment of anything in this film is where Rickman drops. Yeah. Um, and reading what I read today, it made it even better because apparently he's on a 21-foot model drop into an airbag. So yeah. it's safe. It's, it's safer right. than the one that the stunt guys do in Leaf Weapon when they jump off the roof. Very yeah. safe very safe son mm. but he's been held by um by the hands by oh. a stunt guy okay he's counting to three yeah before he drops him yeah he said he lets go at two and that's why alan rickman's face goes yeah because he's literally like what the fuck <laughs> and that's why you, that's that's, that's why it's so a genuine actual reaction of a dude getting dropped early <laughs> and, and freaking the fuck out because he doesn't want to die <laughs> And that's why it's just I love I, I have the idea and of John McTiernan looking at the film the, again. Looking at the fucking screen, he's been like, "Yes, <laughs> for oh, you, son of a bitch." <laughs> but yeah, oh, just amazing. Um, long fall though, when you watch the actual like the exterior. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, yeah. that's no. Yeah, that's, that's a whole bag of no. That's um, a, the other bit of fun before I before I let these two uh, hand out their favourite scene awards. Uh, Fun bit of fun. The tower used for Nakatomi Tower is the Fox Tower, which was under construction at the time. Fox rented it to themselves. What a tax write-off! It's a really nice tax write. 
They rent so it's it kind of them. like Patrick Stewart renting out the X Men wheelchair to the guys who make X Men. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Because, right. you know, that's what you do. What are your favourite scenes? Well, I'm pretty sure it's this movie where he's like. <laughs> We've watched them like back to back, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. where he's like, I'm going to cook you and then I'm going to eat you. Yeah, it is. It's where, um, you know, where they're fighting near the big round tube things and he, Carl finally falls over and he's oh. like, uh, do tell you, brother Squeal, and all that sort of shit. They end up fighting for the next <laughs> room. And Carl hits him, and McLean's like, <laughs> Yeah, the trash talk is pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, God. In both films, the trash talk is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, probably, I wouldn't say it's my favourite, pro- probably one of the most powerful <laughs> is him having to, like, walk through the glass and him pulling the glass out of his foot. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, and he just pulls out a thing. It's just like chucks it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. What are your uh, what are your yeah. favorite scenes? I'm gonna say pretty much any moment when uh, John McClane is talking to himself. <laughs> um, well, uh, like like you said before, when he was in the vent uh, in the vent scene, that was good. Um, I liked the one as as stupid as I thought it was with the villain when he's on top of the table shooting down at him. Uh, while they, well, he's <laughs> underneath the table crawling on his back, and he's like, when you have the chance to kill someone, do it. And he's just standing there saying it while he's doing it. He's like, boom, 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 boom. And thanks for the advice. Yeah. Wasn't there a fun fact uh, about that scene? For yeah. this film, John McTiernan used extra loud blanks to have really loud gunshots. Bruce Willis mm. was in such a tight area under that that he's now permanently deaf in his left ear from that one scene. Fucking hell. Wow. And did he care? Bruce Willis, he was probably like, I'm getting paid, I don't care. He had five million for this movie, which back then was a big chunk of money. That's huge. That's Especially huge. considering when it originally came out, his face wasn't on the poster, it was just the tower. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, it, but even though, like, a lot of the quick thinking um, situations he was in, he's like, Grant, I'm in this bloody small place, what am I going to do? All right. Use me, put me, wedge me gun in here and hang off the thing to jump into this vent or yeah. tie a hose around my waist and jump off the building and yeah. uh, take a gun to me back and it's just such a quick yeah, thing yeah the gun to the back, back. That's, that's good that's yeah. really fun that's, that's right. actually that scene was probably my favourite actually that one right there where he's coming out with the on his back and mm-hmm. he's got the gun and he's just laughing yeah just standing there laughing just, just being well, cocky as fuck with the vents you know in movie style they could have just had like a prop Vent, yeah, exactly. Speaker, but he's jammed in, in, and I felt really claustrophobic. Like Watch he it. probably did as yeah. well, just the way it was shot. Yeah, absolutely. It showed that. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Let's let's hand out some awards then. Uh, who given it's 2015, so we haven't changed the award structure, so we'll give the old award. Uh huh. Who are you giving your barber seat? <sighs> Thornburg. The journalist order. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I figured that's where you'd go. Fuck him. In I the figured arse. that's where you'd go. Yeah. I hate him. I hate him. Yeah. Brad? Okay. Oh. I'm going Ellis. He was a dick. I had yeah, yeah, particularly hate him. Will be. Really? You use a guy, yeah. use a pen. Fuck off. I really hated him at the moment when, um, at the start, when they were sort of getting introduced to each other and everything, and he goes over to Ollie, oh, show him the watch I got. Show him, show him. Oh, it's a Rolex. He's coked out of his fucking <laughs> head. <laughs> yeah. What's the fuck off, you dickhead? <laughs> okay, who's your barber going to? The journalist with his like, yeah, he's like got a journalism to do whatever it takes to get a story. That was that piece for you. I just said Brady's. You guys said Brady's. Brady's because a lot of people piss me off in this film. We got Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. <laughs> What's the deputy? What's oh, uh, uh, yep. principal from Breakfast Club? Dwayne Robinson. Yeah, well, the bull mess with the bull. We get, get the, the horns. horns that guy. Yeah, Paul Gleason. Uh, hacker dude. Theo and Carl. <laughs> Carl. Hey, Carl. Carl's a fucking knob. I want vengeance. He's literally. How the fuck did he get like, off that chain? I don't know, but he's the inverse Thor. <laughs> <laughs> inverse <laughs> Alan Alan uh, Eric uh, Alan Kramer Thor. That's just Thor. Any version of Thor. It's just an Thor. He's just an inverse Thor. Just a bitchy. He's just a shitty like. Just you know, if you, if you bought a uh, like. Chinese knockoff Thor figure. It'd be third. It'd be third. I T H U R. Yeah. It'd be Carl. 
It would just be Carl. Just Carl. Probably just, it'd just be that bloke in like a package to be like, I have nothing else to do with my time. I'm shit. <laughs> Those are my brainies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. who, uh, he can press this too. Alright, I'm going Brady's. I got uh, McLean. <coughs> Ow. <laughs> like, how can you go past Ow? Um, what was it? Uh, Mark, like, there was some really. Just just for the names of these thugs alone, like Marco. Oh, yeah. Marco! They shot Marco! I'm like, oh, poor Marco. I'll give no, 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 they need to go and check if they really shot <laughs> So that's. <laughs> that's. He needs to be sure. That's the one. Marco is the one that they throw off the fucking building, mate. That's right. That, that's the one that gets Al's attention. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, Uli That's Witches. why he doesn't know if he's actually dead. <laughs> he's not one the fucking prick because he's late. Yep. Uh, Uli, how long? Now, uh, just for the, the crunch bar scene. <laughs> yeah. And I actually liked uh, Little Johnson. I kind of liked him. Just for his sass. I was in Junior That's High, in- Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Saigon! In junior High, what do I know about that? But yeah, I, I kind of like him just for his sass. So he gets a braid. He doesn't get a full blown crazy. He gets a braid. Okay. Brayden, you giving out the uh, Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Walt Juniors to Bruce Willis, Alan Rickman, and Al. Carl Winslow. Carl oh, Winslow. From Phantom Manor. He was. <laughs> Carl Winslow, son. Yeah. He taught Urkel how to live. <laughs> he given you a right to too. Um, I'll probably give it to Alan Rickman. Just for... The- it being his first performance, so I think he did a good job. As yeah. a villain. And I too need to give my turn. Fuck you, Fucking amazing forward. Ballon Rickman. That's how I imagine. I just want to talk to Alan Rickman just because I, I literally imagine that he just constantly says he's like, he's like a non retarded Team America Matt Damon, just always saying his own name. I endorse this film, I'm Alan Rickman. <laughs> And I'd like to order pizza supreme and Hawaiian and Madden Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like for Madden. Madden Rickman. I can't get to the phone right now. I'm Madden Rickman. Please leave a message after the Alan Rickman of Madden Rickman. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. Uh, Alright, so let's read this thing. It. What's your rating for <laughs> Die Hard? Out of five? Out of five. 4.75. It's damn near, for me, it's perfect. Almost perfect for an 80s one. Okay, here's a, here's a quick one. Just before we move on, I'm going to ask you for a draft. I probably won't be able to answer this for break. Yes. Of the five, mm-hmm. where does it stand? For me, I would have to say oh, equal first. Equal with, first. With a vengeance. Because I like music. I'll bet it. Vengeance is the best one. Uh, Brave, what are you, what are you rating this one? Yeah, this... Yeah, I had a hard time with this. The thing that I like about this film is a few of the characters because they're fucking... They just make me angry, but... Which ones? It was... So like, like, um... Yeah, fucking what? journalist and fucking... Snorter... Snorty McSnort Snort. Um, also known as Harry Ellis and but, Richard Thornburg. But, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm but they weren't. They weren't shit. Was the, Wait, I'll just make an, I'll make an entry to IMDb right please now. Please edit just, Wikipedia right now. I, I will. Snort, snort. Snort. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I will. Reference from the back cave. I will. Hold on. Just give me okay, ten minutes. Okay, well, if you want, if look up uh, Harvard Referencing Generator. You can reference a live interview. Put that. Oh, okay, cool. I'll put that in. Note no, cool, him as cool. notable journalist, a man about town, <laughs> and recreational handsome enthusiast. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Edit the space. Anyway, Continue. Right. That I didn't like those characters. It wasn't that I didn't like them because they were shit. I didn't like them because they were douches. Um, so I love this movie. I'm going to give it a five. Five shit. A five. Wow. Wow. Okay, where's it stand in the uh, in the the five pack? They gotta make a six. I'd say first. Surely, round that shit out. Sorry, it'd be first. It? It'd be first. 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 Where's Vengeance stand? Two. Okay, cool. Hey, Gerardo, what do you rate this? I'll probably give it a four. Just because I missed the start, so... I'd... There were some parts where I was like, I have no idea what's going on, but... 
For me, the style was always inconsequential. Yeah. yeah, the only thing you need to know is that's why he's got his shoes off. That's, that's really oh, cool. Animation mm -hmm. art director is cast. Okay. Uh, and you haven't seen the other ones, have you, to know? No. Is this the only one set at Christmas time? Uh, no. no. Two is as well. But the Christmas thing doesn't really matter. The only reason it matters there is because the whole plot line is how can the same shit happen to the same guy twice. <laughs> That's basically McLean's time mantra throughout the whole film, is how the fuck can this shit happen to me again? But the third one's the best one. You can skip two. Here's what you need to know about number two. The villain at one point does naked karate. Plus it has Samuel L. Jackson talking like a motherfucker! Does he say motherfucker? Yeah, he says motherfucker! A lot! Loud, motherfucker. A lot. So yeah, all right. Well, that is Die Hard. You didn't rate Let's it. You didn't rate it. Didn't I rate it? No. no. Oh, I tried to get out. I tried to go sneaky. I'm ready for Die Hard. This is hard. I mean, Die Hard with a Vengeance is pretty much one of the most perfect action films ever made. And the problem with watching Die Hard and Lethal Weapon together is that Lethal Weapon is probably the best action film no. I've ever seen. We'll discuss this. Be close, the writer's damn good anyway. Um, so I, I can really only give it maybe a four myself. Very good introduction, Alan Rickman's good, but in terms of the fact that because I know what comes after it, it's only a four. Fair enough. Alright, let's move on. Um, okay, where do you, where do you rate it? Like where do I rate it? It's, two. Five. it's number two. With a Vengeance, it's the best I have ever. Absolutely. Okay. I, I've seen With a Vengeance. I owned, the only one I owned on tape was With a Vengeance. Hmm? My brother owned all three, but I had to get my own copy because he was like, stop fucking, you watch this tape too much, it's getting paper thin. And I was like, no! I will not stop watching my Die Hard. Simon is telling John McClane what to do. This is amazing Die Hard With the Vengeance sandwich board. Anyway, let's move on. He is a criminal's worst nightmare. A cop who enjoys the danger. No guns, no jujitsu, just bring him down. They really want to jump. Well, then that's fine with me. Come on. Wait, I what do you mean? Wait a minute. What the? He was ready to retire. Now, he's gonna wish he had. Gun! Oh, oh, oh. Raj, meet your new partner. New partner? <laughs> Are you as good as you say you are? Nobody can touch me. Suppose we better register you as a lethal weapon. You ever met anybody you didn't kill? Well, I haven't killed you yet. Alright, so as you see, Riggs is the lethal weapon. Yep, absolutely. It's a question yeah. the president asked me while I was watching it. Why is this film called Lethal Weapon? Mm -hmm. And then about literally 30 seconds later, mm -hmm. Danny Glover is like, we're going to have to register you as Lethal Weapon. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I enjoyed the consistency of the fact that uh, Riggs never stopped smoking at any point unless he's putting a gun in his mouth. Ah! Or, yeah. eating. or eating. He wakes up smoking. Did you notice yep. that? He woke up smoking. Yep. Yep. Just incredible. The feathered mullet. We talked about bad haircuts in Die Hard. Somehow they redeem them in this one. Because that feathered mullet works. It's beautiful. It's, it's full bodied. It's, 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 it, it has, it's got its own personality. It really is just something quite special, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It really is. It's, it, it is beautiful. I mean, you can't really argue with a man with a mullet like that. No. Or as they say in France, a Malay. A Malay, yeah. Um, so it's just... It's, Gives Dean Cain small up room for his money. The wound is still too fresh. The, yeah, that's there's a different class of mullet. There's, you got your you got your base of the skull mullet, and yeah. then you've got your shoulder length true. mullet, which and you well, can this do that started like from the top of the crown, pretty much. Absolutely, it's that is a that's a full maturity mullet. Oh yeah, you know is, Dean Cain's was adolescent. Adolescent. This is this is a man. That's a nineties mullet. Is, mullet. Is off the top. Oh, absolutely. Um, all right, so. Let's get into what, what we like, what didn't we like about this film. What didn't I like? I don't like Michael Hunzucker, I don't think no. he's that good an actor. I don't think he's that good a character. 
but that's about it for me. Who's that? Uh, the prostitute's the guy, father. The guy who gets killed while he's drinking eggnog. From the oh, yeah, he was annoying. Shoots him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not a good character. I mean, he was there for, to drive the plot a little bit, but that's about it. He was um, there to piss, to make Rods be all like, I've got to get him to take him up there. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. To wait for this. Other than that, I think it's a very solid movie. Yeah. yeah, it is a solid movie. I didn't, I didn't really have much, any, any problems with it. Um, I did feel like maybe the plot was a little bit. I don't know. It sort of felt like it moved on to the next thing very, very quickly. Mm. It was a very, very fast-paced movie. Didn't fill a lot of gaps up or anything like that. There's, um, um, but yeah, I've read the original script for this. The original script's probably about half an hour longer in terms of a film. It's quite a few scenes that get pulled out. Um, that probably what you say that expand the plot a bit more like uh, that that jump cut where they cut to Riggs just on the street talking to the prostitute they get blown away there is a little bit of a lead up to that first of all and yeah. that sort of stuff uh, probably the most notable scene that's cut from the film in my opinion is the film still starts the same way with Michelle Hunsucker taking a dive off the building and then instead of cutting straight to Roger in the bath we end up seeing um Riggs in a car basically just drinking and fucked up and he's just in a car yep. park of like a, I think it was a convenience store or something like that and there's these kids tying bottle rockets to the tail of a dog and um, he gets out and basically does his Riggs freak out thing and pull, basically pulls a gun on him and is like what if I tie that? no hang on he, he uh, grabs the bottle rocket and goes to shove it down one of their pants and he's like how would you feel if I attach the bottle rocket to your tail sort of thing uh, they run off, he takes the dog, then you cut to Murtar's house for that scene. Then it picks up with the dog running along the beach into Riggs's house. Uh, and it's meant to be the next morning, that's why he's meant to be lying there. The implication is meant to be that he hasn't slept because he doesn't sleep. He's mm. literally laid there the entire night with a cigarette in his mouth, thinking. Mm. Paints a bit more of a picture that he's fucking mental. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, there's little things as well in this film that they don't really expand that in the in the script you understand like where he goes nuts like the Christmas tree part where he goes to buy the coke for a hundred bucks <laughs> yeah. which is a great scene um, the reason he goes nuts at the end where that where you know where he's like I see that nuts and he starts going crazy is because he's actually the coke is meant to have hit him at that point so he's coked out at that yeah. moment that's why he's yeah. like yeah you can see crazy. at the end where he's like and he's kind of trying to shake it off being like what's going on yeah it's meant to be the coke. Yeah. Mm. So I picked mm. up that's up. also meant to be the reason he constantly chain smokes is he's meant to constantly be on the edge and stress. So he's just mm-hmm. that's why at the end he doesn't he doesn't go to Roger's house for the smoke at the end. He's not smoking. Mm. He stops in you know, like if they hadn't made a sequel, this film still wraps it up in that he stops smoking once he says goodbye to his wife. He still mm. misses her, but he accepts that she's gone mm. and he puts the cigarettes out. Mm-hmm. Gives Roger the bullet, puts the cigarettes out. Yeah. But they continued on for the second one in, in a very very excellent one. Um, the fight scenes in this aren't bad, but they're a little bit quick cut, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, there, there are two things that I do want to talk about with this film. First of all, Richard Donner film. Now, we've talked Yay! about Richard Donner before. Um, this, in my opinion, uh, he directed all four. His best his best work. The Superman films are great, but Lethal Weapon is his magus opus. That, that's because they let him have all four. That's true. So, you know, this is what happens when you go, hey, you're really good. Run with it. Just tell us a story. Have the money. Yeah, have the money. We know you'll make it back for us. You know, it's... I agree. It's... Yeah, all four are brilliant. But this one particularly is, is uh, class... Is a uh, class captain for me. Yeah. Mm. Oh, really? This is your favourite one? Yeah. I actually like number two because of Leo. <laughs> I love Leo Gantz. Okay. Okay. They fuck yeah. you on the drive <laughs> I fucking love Leo Gantz. <laughs> uh, Riggs! Riggs! I'm cold! <laughs> I'm like, cold, Riggs. <laughs> yeah, you're lying on the ice, Leo. I'm not dying. <laughs> no, Leo. <laughs> yeah. See, I like the see, first I've, I've seen... half. Oh, sorry, you can go, Brayden. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I've seen these movies before, but I couldn't tell you the last time I've seen them, and I'd, I'd forgotten pretty much everything that's happened uh, in this. So this was almost like watching it for the first time for me. Um, you know, remembered little bits and pieces, but, yeah, I loved this movie. It was, it was a lot of good... Um, yeah, there was, a, there was a lot of good actions. Like I said, it skipped through uh, a few bits very quickly, but I did love the characters and how they're two very different characters. One sort of very clean-cut family man to begin with and the other's fucked. And um, yep. that scene when he's putting the gun in his mouth, I was just like, wow. 
Yeah, that was where, unbelievable. Where he's on the bed with the photo of his wife, or where Rod just yeah. like, don't fuck around, put it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. What's amazing from yeah. that scene is if you actually watch that scene, the only reason Reeks doesn't die is because Rog gets his thumb in the, the hammer. Yeah. Reeks actually yeah, goes to kill bat. himself. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think Danny Glover actually ver- like vocally says, ah, yeah, as well, because the hammer snaps on his... No, it snaps his thumb. He sticks his thumb. thumb. He yeah. literally goes bang and sticks his thumb. Fuck. Yeah. That's why Reeks says, don't tempt me. You shouldn't tempt me, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love... I, I, but you're talking about the bit where he's like actually trying to do it himself and he gets pissed off because it's not mm-hmm. that scene yeah and he can't do it that's a great scene yeah mm. apparently um, yeah. Uh, very dir- powerful scene I can't remember who directed it but uh, when li- li- uh, after this Mel Gibson went on to do Hamlet film version of Hamlet the reason he got cast as Hamlet was because of that scene the director saw that scene and realised okay. that he had the, the emotional range in his face to play what amazes me is Danny Glover's meant to be 50 he's only 40 Riggs is meant to be 38. Mel Gibson is fucking 30 in this film. Yeah. Wow. 30. He looks so old. That'll be all yeah. the drugs, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Cocaine is hell drug. It's a Allegedly, drug. Mel. Stay calm, mate. I know you have problems with that. Allegedly. Breathe. Allegedly. <laughs> Hypothetically, <laughs> if you were to do lots of drugs. You know, if you were to, uh, to do that. In the 80s. It was the 80s, it's, so, so, it's so you, okay. you like the first half of this film? Yeah, I thought the first half was a lot stronger. Mm-hmm. Just with the character development, I thought it was done well. And You didn't like Mertrell and Reeves going on a uh, vendetta to get the, the Colonel and Mr. Joshua? It just got, it was just the same old stuff. It was like, well, the daughter gets kidnapped and it's just guns. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, um, that doesn't interest me. Yeah, that's, he's that's a really good shot. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but, face. I understand the point. He's like really good, like with he's his a, gun. You understand that Riggs is a, a lethal weapon. He's a lethal weapon, <laughs> but when it, it's just a stupid, like the bad guys miss, like oh, miss you, shoot you. It's, yeah, they're pretty shitty mercenaries. Um, Let's be honest. Might, yeah, get, might get him in the arm or something. I mean, there, there is one standout mercenary. If we could bring that up now, if we want. That's the Asian guy. Endo. Hit him again, Endo. Hit him again. It's, that scene for me is fucking... <laughs> fucking frightening! And, and like... The, the, when he's getting Mel electrocuted. Is, the most honest line yeah. I think he has in that film that I believe the most is, I'm gonna get down from this, and I'm gonna break your neck, and I'm gonna kill you. Like, yeah. he's just so like... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like, is that the same Asian guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm like, wait a minute. I think this what is the only movie where he has to speak It was exactly well. the yep. same. I was blown away because like, Adrian was like, is that the same guy? And I'm like, yeah, he's always this dude and he never speaks. And then like three seconds later he, he talks and I'm like, that dude can speak? Well, I thought he was... But <laughs> he looked exactly the same with like the mole he's and like, always the long looked the hair same and Even forever. now. <laughs> yeah. He has looked the same forever. See, that's one of my favourite scenes because Gary Busey is actually getting in on and throwing him on and like he's, catches himself a couple yeah. of times. Like, Fuck! Yeah, it's one of the best scenes. It's Gary Gary Busey, before oh, he damaged yeah. his brain <laughs> on something. He had a motorcycle Allegedly. Accident. Was it? He had, a, he had a motorcycle accident without a helmet and went head first into something. Oh, those California motorbike wars. Well, and uh, and it's now your own we, that's why we have Gary Busey on Entourage. But yeah. That Gary Busey is good too. Yeah, all Gary Busey's are good, but this guy, like when Gary Busey was intense and not crazy. What happened? Yeah. Like, how is he crazy now? He's got brain damage. No, he's legitimately. Yeah, I know, but like, what's he, what's his behaviour like? He doesn't remember lines all that well. Like he's, Gary Busey plays Gary Busey now because the man can't be a character. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's he's he's, he's, he's not brain damaged so much. He can't speak and access and recall. He's just. <laughs> <laughs> he makes artwork of times he was on peyote in the desert. If, if you, if, we'll, wa- we'll watch the Gary Busey episodes of Entourage because okay. apparently it's it's more of Gary Busey came on set and they were like, "What do you want to do, Gary?" And he was like, "The sun and the moon are in the sky of the twelve quadrants." And they were like, "Just start the fucking <laughs> camera. <laughs> just start rolling." <laughs> Vinny just stand there and go, "Uh huh." Uh, that's sad, so, but yeah, you know, um, if you're not going to wear a, a helmet, that's. I, I do want to talk about uh, probably the uh, the third main character in this film because there is a third main character, uh-huh. and it's this one. Oh, our mate Sax. Sax 
Saxy. It's, the weapon sax is amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got a, one of my mates who played sax all through high school, and I'm pretty sure it's because of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He it's can play great. that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> the only thing that makes his saxophone seem so fucking badass. We're like, yeah, kill a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Beverly Hills 90210 of action movie music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's what geez. I want to see now. I want to see Martin Riggs Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Rickman playing saxophone. Alan He'd be like, Rickman. Dur, 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 dur. I'm Alan oh, Rickman. I'm Alan Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so what were the three, the three similarities? Well, we've got, um, was Al, Al Lang, uh, was it Alan Lang? I'm pretty sure that's what, uh, playing, uh, Asian Mercenary 1 oh, and, yeah, and yeah. uh, uh, Endo. Endo. Uh, the female reporter who plays, not the, opposite the, Thornberry, but like in the, the studio. The female reporter in Die Hard. In Die Hard, the, the female is, is the psychologist. Yep, yep. And, well, uh, Michael Kamen did the themes, theme music for Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. So he's the man behind Lethal Weapon Sax. He is. Well, there you go. Yes. So you know, I, Die Hard probably would have been a better film with more sax. Like, everything's better with more sax. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Brayden, I can ask you a question about this film. Um, when it comes to Lethal Weapon, do you think it's a really well written film? Like, do you enjoy the film? The dialogues. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you like the characters? Do you no. like the dynamic of a black friend and a I white do, I friend? Do. And I like the, I like the dialogue between. Um, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. Um, I, I don't really know how to explain it. It's very different, and I don't know. They they speak like every sort of little bit of that they can even think of, like every bit of their mind. They're just like, do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? They um, have chemistry. Like, like the bit where they're in the car and, and Rick starts yeah. smoking, and Danny Glover's like, "Don't smoke in the car," and he's like, "Well, what if I like crack a window?" Like, it's not about cracking a window. It's I'm trying their to keep myself. Their <laughs> banter kind of flows. Yeah, they're like, they're, yeah, yeah, it's almost no. like they've been friends for ages. Yeah. Because the the reason I ask is they that have chemistry. to me it felt very similar to another film I've seen. It felt like. Um, Iron Man 3, where Rhodey and Tony Stark <laughs> oh. have that chemistry. And the reason for that is, it's written by the same fucking bloke. So, all I want to point out here is that uh, you're a hypocrite because this film is basically <laughs> Iron Man 3, and you like it! You like it, you goddamn hypocrite! That wasn't, that wasn't my beef with Iron, like Iron, Iron Man 3! That wasn't my beef! I didn't hear any of that, I was Boy. too busy pointing out how you're wrong. Boy. So you feel free to tell me what you said again, you Iron Man 3 lover. I said that wasn't my beef! With Iron Man 3, my beef with Iron Man 3 was shit fucking villains ruin the whole thing. And no Iron Man in Iron Man 3. Because it's meant to be that it's the man makes the suit, not the suit makes... Look, we've been through this. If it was a Batman film, you would have been like, holy shit, he was Batmaning and detectiving and being Bruce Wayne and using his secret identity to the most... God damn it, I love Batman. But in this one, you're all like, I'm in the suit, boom, boom. Every episode, Prez. Every episode, this gets bought up. But seriously, Shane Black's fucking amazing. This movie's dope. Absolutely. Too wrong shit. <laughs> <laughs> I found another similarity. Mm. Both mm. guys got hung. Yes. And jumping off of buildings. Yes, yeah, so, no, uh, jumping Guns. off <laughs> Johns. No, yeah, jumping off that, buildings was big in the pretty, 80s. That's pretty standard. In, but I mean, it just seemed like so similar, like, Jumping off of buildings mm, yeah. and like getting hung. Speaking of that's... jumping off of buildings, uh, there's a couple of moments that are, I guess we'll, we'll get onto our favourite scenes in this. Mm -hmm. Two stand out for me. One is um, jumping off of buildings, Briggs helping the suicidal guy by making him jump. <laughs> yeah. I think that's fucking hilarious that Danny Glover's just absolute snap <laughs> afterwards. Like I say, put it in your mouth, you might miss. But I've got a knee, this one. I love that. Like that, that moment's great. The other bit that I love is um, when they go to the house to bust. Just before Dixie gets blown up, they go to the house with the drug dealer. Oh, yeah, welcome the in pool. with the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't need a warrant because we welcome in. Then mm -hmm. they shoot the guy in the pool. Yeah. As they're coming out of the pool, Murtaugh's like, 
You haven't met anybody you didn't kill. <laughs> and he rings his leg. Uh, I haven't killed you yet. <laughs> Don't do me any favors. <laughs> <laughs> I love that moment so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are, you, what are your favorite scenes? Let's go round robin. Okay. Uh, scene with Endo and Gary Boozy. Hit him again. Endo. Yeah, yeah. That and for like just sheer intensity, I have to say in the trailer, with gun in the mouth, photo of Vicky. That's uh, mm. probably one of those, uh, when I was young, when I saw it, I, I remember breaking a tear going off. Fuck, it was pretty hardcore. It was yeah. pretty hardcore. I think I was about 10 or 11 when I saw it. So, yeah, that's probably one of the scenes that stuck with me. Hmm. Brayden, what do you got? What are your favourite lethal weapon moments? Yeah, I'm going to like jump onto the uh, Gun in the Mouth trailer scene as well. That was pretty pretty powerful. Uh, but also the buying the coke for the hundred bucks, that was... A hundred thousand, you fucking idiot! A hundred thousand! Well, even before that, he's like, a hundred? Wow, that seems like that's a lot. And when he's counting, he's like, 93, 94, what are you doing? Shut up, man, I'm going to lose count! 95, 96... <laughs> That Christmas tree scene, that it's a... Well, I throw a tree as well. You want a tree to put it under? No worries. (laughs) I'll get you the best fucking six-footer I have here. Or he's like, he's trialing or tasting, he's like... Hmm. (laughs) I, uh... The one that... The the one part of that scene that I hate, though, is there's a dude wearing a red checkered shirt Mm -hmm. has the worst... Fucking haircut like I've ever seen. He had the best one out of like the three of them. No, he didn't. Oh, I don't know. Is, was it partly shaved? No, it was and slicked then, back. It was oiled. It was oh, the oil dude. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slicked yeah. back on the sides and then like had like 26 foot mullet. So it was kind of like the I Billy Ray Cyrus, it. wasn't it? Where it was, it was all like, like the Billy Ray Cyrus. Si- <laughs> it was the Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, it was the achy breaky heart. That's what we'll call it. It was achy breaky shit. Achy <laughs> breaky mullet. <laughs> what were you, so you liked the, the, the Christmas coat. tree scene? Did you yep. like the other scenes? Probably the same, the the gun and the wife, that was pretty sad and just... Yeah, absolutely. His performance, I, uh, like him crying and mm. the, the, uh, the him having the dilemma of like, I want to do it but I don't. Yeah, I think it's ultimately what, because I don't think Vicky would, I think he didn't do it because Vicky would be pissed off with him. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, the and the dog. Going, he's got yeah. things to do. Yeah, well the fact he's got his dog now and keeps yeah. him alive. Yeah. As you'll see going forward. Um, I... Uh, the scene that I think is criminally underrated is the one where Rog gets home to find out they've kidnapped uh, yep. what's his daughter's name? Uh, t- uh, uh, Trish and uh, Regina. The older one? Old, eldest? is Regina, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I think it was Trish's wife. Tr- yeah, Trish's wife. Oh, Rianne. Rianne, that's Rianne. it, Rianne. Rianne. Um, and, like, his wife comes out and is like, what's wrong? And he won't, like, he just absolutely will not make eye contact. Yeah. Because he's just, he does know yeah. what I, it's that beautiful moment. It's like, I don't know what to tell you. Mm. And like Riggs, that that's the moment to me where you see Riggs yeah. has an investment in life because yeah. he's like, nah, you just you fuck with my like mm. that's his family now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's what I really like is that like that dinner scene. I love that dinner scene too, where you feel like for the first time Riggs is like, yeah. shit, this is really nice. I yeah. like this. Yeah. Do you like my wife's cooking? No. No. <laughs> yeah, Riggs. Come on, man. Be, be serious. <laughs> love my wife's cooking? No. No. <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> Would you like a brown roast substance for dinner? Oh, I even so, like. Do you know anything about boats? <laughs> Front stairs, back stairs. <laughs> or even enough. with the um the four kids and they're all like bombarding them with questions <laughs> and being like, I oh, my my dad's little uncle has said that the cops always like shoot black, black people. people. Yeah. Is that, Is that true? true? <laughs> no, no. They're like, uh, Riggs is pissing himself <laughs> off in the back. Oh, this is great. <laughs> but um, that saying, do you remember what was written on the note? To like even f- your daughter looks good naked. Yeah, that's just one of the things. Photo, yeah. you don't see what the photo is. Yeah, I'm just like, ooh, that's really. Yeah, yeah it, says, it says your daughter your do- looks good naked, and there's a and he's holding a Polaroid, but you never get to see what the Polaroid is, and which to me just, implies that oh. they have. Yep. And that taking the naked picture of her. Yeah, that's just yuck to to fuck to fuck Murtar up even more, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand the point of pretending Riggs is dead though for him only to like be captured for seconds <laughs> That's the only well, part the, the of plan, the plan was kind of good, but the execution was poor. The, the plan was good if you have more than two fucking do What is the cop who's like, yeah, Riggs is dead. Why didn't he go with him? Yeah, yeah where was that guy with like a bazooka? It's all like, 
Riggs, you got the guy in the car? Yeah, I got the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's cool, uh, Heinz. <laughs> and then the captain could have been over there like, look, man, he's not crazy, I'm not crazy. This is the men's room, do you mind? <laughs> I had a problem with, like, after the father gets shot in the helicopter. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Riggs goes to, like, shoot mm -hmm. it and completely misses. No, he's hitting the helicopter. He, no, he hits it. He hits the helicopter. Well, he doesn't every time. kill anybody, does he? No, because well, it's flying away. Yeah. He's hitting the back of the helicopter. Yeah, yeah well, I think you're, that. Yeah. I guess with the bullet and well, stuff like it's, that. Well, it's, it's kind, kind of, of one of those things like where. Well, of you're the here side, from a, you're, wasn't it? He's come round. He's banged and then turned like. It's like a counter. You know, counter attack thing. Like, all right, this is a massive flat surface, so you mm. turn around where your target goes from, like, say, that to that. Because yeah. you got to think a helicopter doesn't really have side windows; it's got front windows. Hmm. So once the front is at an oblique angle, you're not getting a shot that you can get in. I think Riggs, more than anything, is trying to hit a fuel tank or something that will just rupture so it goes down. Mm. Movie but he, but he didn't do that. I wanted the helicopter to go down. <laughs> and there should yeah, have been then you like. Would have lost Mr. Joshua and then you there got should the have epic fight at the end. Or there should have been like more of a consequence really that he missed. So he should have just been really pissed off with that because he never misses. Or he's, a, helicopter he's, a, he's a lethal line. weapon. He, he, he should I'm be like, able look, to. He is, but at the same time, he's, he's a How man. many dudes does he pluck off in that fucking desert? I know, set, but it's where like. Where he's like toothed out and he shoots the smiley face on the target. I just think you leave Riggs alone. Maybe he was having a bad day. Maybe. But All I just think there should have been something, <laughs> something more to that to show that he. Oh no, like. Kind of like like drive him almost to be like. It did, because once he realised it was Mr. Joshua he was up against, it became personal for everybody. Like he says, you want a shot at the title mm -hmm. at the end of it, which and then Lux makes and go go to basically tap the bitch out. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, that was a very excellent that's a looking go go Clada. I was <laughs> impressed. I was impressed. Okay, let's 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 wrap this up and get into the final debate moment. So, who gets your Barbara? I know who you're going to say, but I'm going to say the general. I don't like Mitchell Ryan, the general. The general's pretty weak, even the way he dies. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. Just does screaming, trying to reach the grenade. Yeah. Like, doesn't get nothing out of him. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. Joshua's the obvious, 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 obvious threat, but as like Joshua, a head honcho. great threat, though. That's what's great. Yeah. Mr. Joshua is great. Imagine Just if we had UC's best performance. Oh, absolutely. If we had Alan Rickman. Alan, Alan Rickman. Rickman. In charge of Mr. Jo Joshua. <laughs> Rich, I'm going to kill you. At I'm Nagatomi Alan Tower. <laughs> I'm Alan Rickman. Perfect movie. <laughs> but no, uh, the general gets my Barbara for being weak. General? Okay. Just generally weak. The generally weak. Brayden, who are you giving yours to? Um, I'm giving mine to, you know that scene after they get the girl back? Um, yeah. And, um, what's his name? Morta, Morta. Murta. 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 Um, shoots the the driver as the car's coming towards him and it flips and it explodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Riggs is coming back and as Riggs is coming back he gets stopped by two cops. Mm hmm Give it to those two cops. Hey? Who are, like he comes in with a like machine gun and they're like, Whoa <laughs> And he's like it's <laughs> he's okay. Up, they're like, No 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 you can't come through here. Yeah, like, that's my favorite part too, is that they don't they're not <laughs> like we can gun. Yeah, just I got a gun. That's cool. Look, it's if you look, it's look. Nothing look. to see here. It's America. <laughs> Post -code. Yeah, that's cold true. line. That's a good point. That's a so, good point. There is no issue. It was in Texas. He'd be walking through with an RPG. Hmm. So yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, that, that, that so there's no cops right. getting here, Barbara. Yeah, that's it for being bad at the job. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, don't get it, Barry Allen. He, he giving yours to me. Probably the dad. For just yep. being meh. Yep. And also for being a scumbag for allowing all the heroin to get in here. Hunsucker. Hunsucker. Yeah. Oh, Hunsucker. hold on. I have to, because there's another thing that I, I noticed with this movie. I just got to double check, because I could be tripping balls here. I could be doing a Mel Gibson. Let me just go through his <laughs> filmography. Where are you? There it is. Now, the operation that Hunsucker was part of was called Air America. A real operation. Mel Gibson then later starred in the movie with Robin Downey Jr. called Air America. Which was telling, very poorly telling the, that story. the true life story of Air America. So that was weird for me. Like, didn't you do a movie called Air America? Aha, uh -huh. I see what you did here. Well, no, I just Air, Air America, weird. I mean, around that time, Air America was just coming to 
lot. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. that was a pretty hot topic. Oh, absolutely. Gibson in the first absolutely. Place. So I'm not surprised he was in. Mean, like I said, Mel Gibson was go to every man. Of course, he was in that film. Absolutely. Like he was even in Casper. Um, so yeah. Hmm. He was in The Man Without a Face. Very good in that too. Mm. My. Hey, this was a hard one given out of bar because, like, even the people who were shit are good. So I'm giving mine to the psychiatrist because she doesn't even try to help Rich. She's just like, get him, like, off the force. See, the thing is, what I love about that is she's such an arsehole character at number four. It's hilarious. What oh, yeah, he gives her shit constantly. Oh, I mean, so good. she gets her come up with, but in this first one, she's just a bitch. Oh, yeah, I think that's what, like, that's why they cast her. Like, she's. Put it this way, like, what was it, two years beforehand she played the news anger who was on there on TV, on, in the movie for 10 seconds. Yeah. In Die Hard. So it's like, oh, he won't use this character again. Wait a minute, come back. Yeah. So I think that's what happened. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she gets, she gets my bar on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what about Cranston's? Oh, fuck's sakes, man. Uh, I'll give two. I'll give, uh, what do we call them again? Paul Allens? Aaron Paul. Michael Steves. Michael Aaron. Steves. Peter Allen, Steve Perry, Hugh Jackman, Steve Perry. Should have been gone. Oh, okay. Um, one, two, Richard Donner and Richard Donner, okay. And Michael Kamen. If you give me a sleep, Webster Sacks. <laughs> because honestly, like, so you're not gonna give one to Shane Black for right though. <laughs> nah. 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 Okay. He's okay. Still sore over Iron Man too. Ah. Okay. I don't think he wrote two. I think he only wrote Liquid like One. So he didn't write Leo Gets, so you can't hold Leo Gets against him. I don't. Leah gets his great anyway. Braden. Yeah, I'm going to go with the obvious ones with Ricks and Mortar. Murta. Yeah, Murta. Ricks and Murta. Yeah. Word, Braden. Word. I love the chemistry between them. Who are you, Adrian? I'm going to give out three. Walt Juniors. Juniors. Yep. One, two, Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, and Mel Gibson's mullet. <laughs> Maybe nice. I think we should give hair, hair hair of the year award as well. You can give Brayden hair award to. I uh, know oh, it's for rapey behaviour. We need yeah. different hair. <laughs> Dean, you can give an you give an honorary Dean Kane mullet award. Too. Yeah, I'll give a uh, Dean Kane's on, honorary mention. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Gibson's mullet. I, I have uh, I have some some more to for this one. It's probably some Brady's or guy or Parliament's clothes, man. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I will throw out Brady's now that you mentioned that. I will throw out Brady's. Nice. I will throw out Brady's. We're going to start, obviously, Reese and Murtaugh. Yeah, totally. Mr. Joshua. Yeah. And we got Richard Donner. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what are you rating it? Uh, like I said, this is out of the series. Oh, oh, am I allowed to rate it out of the series and as a should you watch movie? Yep, and where does it stand in the series? Okay, it's uh, Class Captain for me. So, so it's, it's one? Number one. Okay. Uh, should you watch it? Absolutely. If you haven't, you're a Satanist or a communist. And I'm going to go four and a half. No, four point seven five gloves as well. Okay. Same as Dial. Yep. Okay. Brain, what do you rate now? I'm going to give it a four and a half. For me, the big thing that sort of gets it is uh, you yeah, just the way it skipped through the plot very very quickly. So mm -hmm. you're looking forward to the Richard Donner cut. It's worth the Richard Donner cut. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, Richard Donner's director's extended cut. With more sax. Version. The sax edition. Nothing the but sax. sax. <laughs> the sax is the lethal weapon. What are you what are you giving the right? <laughs> um <laughs> They expected Alto Alto, but they got tenor. <laughs> I'll probably give it a three point nine. Cause I enjoy Die Hard a bit more than this one. I oh, enjoy Die Hard more than that. I'm giving this a five. It's one of my favourite movies. I can watch this film time and time again. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm still like, <laughs> <laughs> it is every the time he says he's too old, I'm like, you're not too old for this shit. And at the end of it, Murtar. we're not too. Oh, it's just it's one of those where you can go back and watch it again and again, and it's still just a really fun buddy it's still Solid, yeah. It's just. I'm sure fun. if I, because I haven't seen this either, if I went back and watched it. You I'll pick probably up pick up on a lot more stuff. And Why did you watch them going ahead? They they kind of re like they they give you what you missed in one. Yeah. And two, they kind of explain it back to you. But like I was saying before, Die Hard, I preferred the like the plot and the story and like the action that was happening mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. But in Lethal Weapon, I like the characters and like the dialogue. Well, that, that's what I was going to get into next. Is comparing the two now. So we talked about them both. Let's get in the comparison. What's the everybody's opinions? Stronger film and why? 
lethal weapon two. Uh, lethal, lethal weapon for me, I should say. It's um, a stronger film. It's a stronger film just because I like the there's an element element of uh, stupid in it, which supersedes the seriousness of Die Hard, and it's probably the first buddy film that I watched. It's I can believe that actually. No, I can actually see those characters hanging out in real life, sort of thing. It's the first real body cop film. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, it's just it's one of those things. And I love Riggs is a, a ridiculously broken character. Yeah. Uh, Murta is a ridiculously, absolutely fine character until Riggs rocks Murtar's up. Murta is fucking. like a yeah. film father of all time. I think. He's, he's essentially so the jo- J Dubs of this. Yeah. Yeah, he is essentially J Dubs. Um, so it's just like for J-Dubs. me. Yeah. For me, it's just a stronger film, just in general. Plus, the rewatchability of it is just. Do you know who Riggs from uh, uh, Murtar reminds me a lot of? Uh, Joe West. Joe West, yeah. Like the same yeah. type of human being. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right, Brave, which one do you prefer? Uh, I'm gonna go with Die Hard, um, mainly because it is a bit of a child. It's more of a childhood classic to me than what Lethal Weapon is, because I've only sort of seen. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the last time I've seen Lethal Weapon. Um, but yeah, Die Hard I've watched many, many, many times and I loved it. Um, I do agree that there's probably stronger character dialogue in Lethal Weapon than there is uh, Die Hard um, but yeah, I enjoyed the story to Die Hard more, I think Well, you're giving us your two cents uh, I'm going with Lethal Weapon all the way we're tired, we, we split this one down the middle um Die Hard has the better villain without question. I mean, it's Alan Rickman. Rickman. <laughs> so, without question. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. So, uh, you, Rick. you can't see. You can't beat that. But uh, Lethal Weapon has the better script and the better heroes. Oh, absolutely. And at the end of the day, villains make the heroes. Mm. But you can have a shit villain and a great hero, and it's still great. But mm. if you have a great villain and a shit hero to be bad mm. and that's not saying John McClane is shit by any means oh shit no Riggs is just better and the, the dynamic between Riggs and Murtar is yeah insane. I think yeah Riggs and Murtar are like they, they're the same they're the two opposite sides of the same coin yeah. that's the thing that's Both what makes it work all neutral basically yeah. <laughs> or chaotic um, yeah. yeah one yeah. is uh, chaotic lore and yeah. Well, yeah anyway um I do want to give a big shout out to Lethal Weapon for being the uh, the first film in history to use a mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> mobile. That's a true, true fact. <laughs> it was you a phone that like was a backpack. Hello. Portable. Pretty mobile. Not backpacks, but making sure they had the label facing out. Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. They would have cost a lot of money. No, when you write it off a tax, it would. I'm pretty sure that bloody uh, Richard Donner was like, "Well, I'll spend. I'll take this with me. That way, if I need to make another suit, man, I can just." Yep. So yeah, well ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this Christmas special for 2015. I hope you enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed doing it for you and watching these films. Obviously, I think you've got a big both watch from all of us for both these films. Uh, Absolutely. Agree yeah. with that? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, for 2015, Merry Christmas and Happy oh, New Year. Do it. <laughs> and a Happy New Year into 2016. On behalf of myself, your host, Red Thunder, Adam Gerard, I've been joined by the Honey Vegetarian Neil. 2015 host of the year. The dad night braid in the hand. Yippee Kaye, make it Merry Christmas. And the president, Adrian Orman. I was allowed to come back onto the show. I'm excited. It sucked less than that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all <laughs> next year. Hello, Alan Rickman. It's Alan Rickman. Reminding you to move the pork chops from the freezer to the refrigerator so they defrost properly. Do not disappoint me.